Hi, I'm Anthony F. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River, bringing you another hot and fiery Black Memphis history lesson. At the time of this writing, April of 2024, Memphis, Tennessee is the most populated city in, of Black people in America, unknown and untold in Memphis, Tennessee, in regards to Black Memphis history, is Black Memphis history in its relationship to E.H. Crump. Let me be clear, there is no Black Memphis history outside of its relationship to E.H. Crump, the former Memphis mayor who was known as Boss Crump, who controlled politics not only in Memphis, he controlled politics in the state of Tennessee, and part of his control was allowing blacks to vote and using voting to control politics and not just Memphis, but in the state of Tennessee. You see, the subject that I'm speaking about today is titled Black Memphis History, Dr. J.E. Walker and the E.H. Crump Compromise of the 1940s. You see, the most successful and historic black businessman in the 20th century in Memphis was Dr. J.E. Walker, whose historic impact regarding Black Memphis history is unknown to most Black people in Memphis today. You see, born in, May, in born March 31st, 1879 in Tillman, Mississippi, with, within the rural Claiborne County, his parents worked as sharecroppers on a cotton plantation. He graduated from Arcon College and later from Meharry Medical College. He established a medical practice in Indianola, Mississippi, where he served from 1906 to 1919. He founded in Memphis, Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in 1922. You see, in 1923, Dr. Walker, along with charter officers such as J.T. Wilson, M. W. Barner, Dr. R. S. Fields, A. W. Willis, B. F. Boot, founded Universal Life Insurance Company in the Fraternal Bank Building in Memphis. You see, under his leadership, it became one of the largest black-owned insurance companies in the nation. He founded Tri-State Bank in 1946, Walker along with his son, A. Maceo Walker, founded Tri-State Bank where he served as the bank's first president. Now, in regards to J.E. Walker, unknown and untold, the elephant in the room was Memphis boss, the czar, E.H. Crump. There's no way in the hell a black company could be successful in Memphis without the blessings and approval of E.H. Crump. You see, what Dr. J.E. Walker did in Memphis was more historic and black life changing in Memphis. You see, Tri-State Bank and Universal Life Insurance Company in the 1940s, Universal Life expanded its civic funding by deliberately investing in housing projects in Memphis. You see, the first one they did was called the Riverview Housing Project, which consisted of 400 homes uh, created for black families with running water, functioning sewer systems, and safe drainage to allow black families to have safe places to live in the city and cultivate a healthier community. Now, we move further. You see, in 1950, Universal Life and Tri-State Bank created a second housing subdivision in Memphis, the J.E. Walker subdivision off Mitchell Road with 1,000 homes for black families. You see, in the 1950s, Universal Life and Tri-State Bank created a third subdivision for blacks of which the community I live as a child in Memphis called Ellison Heights. This is the unknown and untold story about Dr. J.E. Walker. He was part of the E.H. Crump supporters called the Black 
Democratic Party. Now, let's review history. You see, in 1916, Robert R. Church Jr. founded and financed the Lincoln League in Memphis. In 1917, Church organized the Memphis branch of the NAACP, making it the first branch in Tennessee. By 1919, the Memphis branch had become the largest branch in the South. You see, Church's commitment to civil rights led to his election as the first member from the South to the NAACP Board of Directors. He played a critical role in establishing 68 branches across 14 states representing over 9,000 9, members in the South. Let me take you to the Dr. J.E. Walker E.H. Crump Compromise of 1940. Robert R. Church Jr. in the 1938 gubernatorial election, George W. Brooks supposedly annoyed a white woman. In short, the police killed this black man, and when Robert R. Church and the black community confronted E.H. Crump, the police department and the police department about these issues, they were totally ignored. But our church, Junior, and the black community changed their votes and not voted for an E.H. Crump opponent for governor. Enraged, Crump started in the reign of terror. See, let me take you to Memphis history. You see, on December the 9th, 2021, the U.S. Senate voted to remove the name Clifford Davis from the federal building in Memphis. You see, Clifford Davis was a Ku Klux Klan member, and 70% of the Memphis Police Department were Ku Klux Klan members, and Clifford Davis was the chief of police. Now, upset that blacks voted against his candidate, Crump and the Memphis Police Department started a reign of terror against the black community. See, E.H. Crump outright ran Robert R. Church out of Memphis, and he ran out later Dr. Martin, who owned the black baseball team. He ran these black leaders and anyone who would defy Crump out of Memphis. Now, in 1940, Crump put Walter Chandler in office. Now, you may know Walter Chandler. You may not know Walter Chandler. However, we remember his adopted son, Wyatt Chandler. You see, a coalition of black leaders, it was Reverend Blair T. Hunt, who was the pastor of Mississippi Boulevard Church. It was Reverend T. O. Filler, who was a pastor. And there was Dr. J. E. Walker. They came together and agreed to show support for Crump. In the letter that Dr. that Reverend uh, Blair T. Hunt wrote, Blair T. Hunt said, quote, Mr. Crump is almost a human idol to us, and they appreciated uh, Mayor Crump in his efforts to clean up the city, and they were happy that he's getting rid of gambling, prostitution, and other vices in the black community. But this coalition called the Black Democratic Party. They supported E.H. Crump, and they got the blessings of E.H. Crump. Now, Crump ran Robert R. Church out of Memphis, and Dr. J.E. Walker now became president of the NAACP. Now, so what has happened is that no black leader would not say anything about E.H. Crump. He had the Black Democratic Party. He had the black leaders. Now, what we have today in Memphis, Tennessee, we have black leaders who today practice the Crump Rule. Let's talk about the Crump Rule. See, the E.H. Crump Rule is this. No black leader could demand social and economic equality with white people. Number two, no black leader was allowed to use his wealth to empower the black community. And number three, uh, this is a black term 
stay in your lane. In other words, Dr. J.E. Walker opened Tri-State Bank for Blacks. They did not use their power to get black business, but they opened only a black bank. They built black communities. They stayed in their lane. They did things that black people did, and this is okay. Now, even though individuals like Dr. J.E. Walker could move into a white neighborhood, they agreed to follow the Crump rules, stay in their lane, stay in their community, and together they were able to create a rigid segregation in Memphis because blacks stayed in their lane and they were led by these black leaders. In fact, Dr. J.E. Walker, via Crump's blessing, became one of the most richest black men in America. There is a sin that misery loves company. In light of the fact that blacks face to make a success, tragedy happened. You see, in 1922, Dr. Joseph Edison Walker founded Mitsu Boulevard Christian Church. In 1958, fellow friend and church member, J.W. Hamilton, a deacon in the church, murdered Dr. J.E. Walker at his office at Universal Life Insurance Company. Look at the article regarding the incident in Jet Magazine, April 7th, 1958. His name was Judge Washington Hamilton, who killed Dr. J.E. Walker at the office of Universal Life Insurance Company. I'm Anthony L. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River bringing you another hot and fiery Black Memphis history lesson. <laughs>